Joining us now to discuss the anti-corruption drive in West Africa is Francis Den Kaifala. Thank you very much, Francis, for joining us on the news. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. I mean, since the uh, NICEWA was uh, formed in 2010, would you say its impact has been felt in various West African countries? I think one of our main objectives is to coordinate anti-corruption efforts um, in the sub-region. And then the impact is felt because of our 15 members. We've had uh, continued capacity trainings, experience sharing, and various workshops that are meant to enhance our work, share experience, and so that we know what is working well in one part of the of, of the of the of the sub-region and what can be copied in other parts. So that is one thing. Also, coordination has been working very well. Uh, we also support each other with borderless investigations. So, for example, if Niger, there's somebody needed by Nigeria for corrupt practices who runs to Niger. It's easy for Nigeria to get him to come across. But Nigeria can also send its personnel to work side by side with the personnel in Niger to be able to bring about results. So that has also been there. And we've had meetings, um, annual general meetings that are being held to discuss issues in the sub-region. For example, the recent um, coup d'etat that affected three of our members who were suspended from our fold and to be able to bring up ideas. So a lot of activities are taking place, particularly with, with the support of ECOWAS and the UNODC that are geared towards enhancing the capacity of the members, but also uh, be useful in terms of ensuring proper coordination and experience sharing. Okay, let, let's talk about you handing over the affairs of Nasiwa to Nigeria's Abdul Rashid Bauer, who heads the country's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Now, we know that Transparency International has rated Nigeria 154 out of 180 countries on the Corruption Perception Index. What's your take on that compared with Nigeria's anti-corruption campaign? I think that, uh, you know, perceptions are not always the best of ways to check what is happening in the country. I believe Nigeria is putting in a lot of efforts in terms of trying to, to, to clean the anti-corruption space. Both the ICPC and the, the EFCC are doing what they can to try to control corruption. And their efforts may not necessarily translate into perception because perception is what people feel, what they think. Um, but that doesn't mean they are not doing a great job at doing things. The conviction rate, for example, at the EFCC is over 2,000 in a year alone. That is something that should be um, applauded. The ICPC is doing a lot of uh, corruption risk assessment in various institutions um, that is bringing about institutional change that is leading to prevention drive across the board, right across the federation. So uh, as far as we in ASIWA are concerned, we do not base our 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 members rule or we do not judge them based on perceptions particularly perceptions done by international in the agencies but really the kind of work they are doing in the country and the impact they are doing and i have no doubt in my mind that they are doing a great job in the sub region one issue is the failure to investigate high profile corruption cases with the unending adjournment of cases it's become a joke in some quarters how do you think this can be addressed we have addressed this in Sierra Leone by setting up a special anti-corruption division of the High Court where our cases are exclusively tried. So when it comes to the clogging that takes place, the judiciary not moving forward with cases uh, because anti-corruption cases line up behind the land cases, civil cases, constitutional cases, and all other cases that are usually uh, criminal cases that usually um, clog the court system. We have navigated this by, solved, by, solved, by setting up the anti-corruption division of the High Court. And I believe Nigeria, too, have been advocating for this for the past 10 years. I think that is one way to solve it. In terms of the prosecution of high-profile cases, one, what I know, based on experience in fighting co corruption in my country, is that the corruption that destroys institutions, those who usually engage in it are at the lower level. The, the public servants, the bureaucrats, they usually have control 
they sign the paper. So there is, it's easier for evidence to point to them than those at the high level. But that doesn't mean if there is evidence against those at the high level, they cannot be equally prosecuted. But usually those at the high level are fewer in number and those cases are far between. So it is easy for people to think that they are not usually prosecuted. But how many ministers do you have, for example, compared to the thousands of bureaucrats that are engaging in corruption day by day? To the thousands of people, police officers, teachers, um, military officers, people, the ordinary men in the streets who are engaging in day-to-day -day petty corruption. So that is why usually the perception is skewed a little bit to think that they are not going after high-level corruption. But I believe that there is no anti-corruption agency we should have as a policy not to prosecute people at high level, particularly when they have the evidence. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Francis Ben Kaifala, for speaking with us. Thank you very much.